<coughs> okay, so we are starting again. Last day of SharePoint. Although we have so many topics, but uh, uh, if you guys uh, insist on email, I'll be uh, creating more videos for that. Otherwise, this is. Uh, so we're go we're gonna be uh, doing some more features and try to see uh, if we do get to create a site. What are the day-to-day -day usage? What is the day-to-day? -day what are the components and features that we will be facing to get a site up and running and to uh, keep it running? So first of all, uh, I would, uh, as always, I would want to. Uh, check the services of the servers so I'll just go to services here and so again so automatic everything is started and uh, also I would want to check the server manager diagnostics and event viewer for anything any good news or bad news So, well, we could see from here, you know, what has been happening since we last saw it. <coughs> so, so, okay, server 3 seems fine. So, I'll just go for server 2, startup, status. Yep, everything's cool. And go for diagnostics in server manager, event viewer. Windows logs application. Oops. There's a lot of critical errors here. Yikes. Okay. In a production environment, uh, this is something very, very serious. Like, they should not be. Maybe it's an error that is not, you know, going to, not a showstopper, but still, our logs should not be. Uh, all critical with crosses, red crosses. Um, but it's something to do with profile and language sync. Uh, so I would definitely want to go ahead and uh, try to resolve this as soon as possible in my production environment. And uh, there is a that exclamation mark here, which means that there are more events. So, I, okay. And 8, 19, 8, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So every minute this event is showing up. Um, it's all, it's still about that language sync. So I would wanna, at later time, definitely I would. In production, I would just get it to, you know, show only the information uh, logs and nothing else, not even warning logs. That would be considered the best working server. Okay, so this is just a daily uh, practice in the production environment uh, that you should see your logs and services every day. Um, okay, so uh, we can see that it's not a showstopper for now, but definitely I would not want any red crosses there. So let's get to the topics for today and uh, there is a lot we did uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, in terms of uh, <coughs> uh, databases and the basic uh, site collections. So let's go and try to create and check our day-to-day -day tasks that we can do and some of other features as well. There's one of that feature called AAM or alternate, alternate access mappings. Um, so it's uh, it allows administrators to, to divide uh, to divide some of the SharePoint sites uh, divide uh, the same SharePoint site. Okay, there's a mistake here. <clears throat> In such a way that there are multiple access points. For internal and external users so what it's trying to say in simple English that if you have created so uh, we had created that exam site last time um, if we try to open that exam site right now it's intranet so we are able to open this exam site from inside the campus but or the company 
but if you want to offer the same site to be accessed from internet and from other uh, you know access points uh, from from your Wi-Fi from your guest networks so it's the same site but you're you know offering it to different types of users coming from different networks so you have to set up so suppose uh, this is internally it can be accessed but if I copy and uh, you know copy this link and go to my internet uh, that's not gonna be <coughs> feasible of course on internet if I paste the same top uh, same URL it's not gonna give me anything why because I did not connect it to the internet I did not go through that procedure of connecting it to the internet um, so alternate access mappings just mean that uh, you can open access to the same site which you're internally accessing your internal users or uh, are accessing the external users will also be accessing the same site but the authentication will be different and in order to set up outside access to your intranet site you have to go through a lot of steps uh, here in the college network uh, there's a lot a uh, lot of it is blocked uh, from inside outside but uh, I will be trying my best to at least give the steps if you're trying that at home uh, to get your uh, you know from outside traffic to access your uh, SharePoint site uh, from internet then there are some steps uh, uh, that you have to follow uh, and there's some paid services you have to buy and uh, that's how you can get the this site to be accessed from the internet as well so uh, where do we go and do that but before that uh, it relates back to uh, so alternate access mappings relates to authentication of course if users are coming from outside this means you're welcoming the hackers as well right so that's not a good idea like uh, if the hackers also know oh there's an access open for outside users as well so of course there has to be an authentication that only the users you are uh, you know which are related to your company should be uh, ac accessing your site not everyone although there is a authentication for everyone access as well uh, which is a public uh, you know site uh, that you publish to the people outside but uh, for now it's still authentication based uh, so only your company users or students uh, should be able to access that from internet so there are authentication zones and each zone can have a single public URL so we're gonna visit this uh, where it is but uh, let's go ahead and see something else here uh, this is these are the types of zones we have uh, so alternate access mappings allow users the ability to access a SharePoint site through different URLs uh, and then there are zones default zone intranet we, we had configured intranet uh, then there's internet which we are going to go through now uh, because of the college restrictions uh, network restrictions we won't be able to actually do it but if we know what uh, you know how to configure it we will be able to set up for a small company uh, you know SharePoint site for the people to access from outside as well then there's custom zone extra zone but we're gonna be talking about and visiting those uh, areas uh, to where we can configure access for internet zone uh, people coming uh, opening the same intranet site from outside the from the internet so you might use AAMs if you are using load balancing or reverse proxies as well uh, but uh, alternate access mappings is mainly for this uh, outside access so um, then there's extending a web application we did it last time we extended one one of our sites uh, to change the port actually but uh, it the extending uh, feature does a lot more as well a new as a new site the extended web application can now have unique secure security access by a unique URL under a separate zone we can separate the zone which means that oh this site was accessing from internal for internal users now this site can be accessed for internet users as well so you can create a separate zone for the same site 
with the alternate access mapping already configured for you. So you might have, uh, have a need to configure something like this HTTPS for outside site. Anyone knows what is HTTPS? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> HTTPS. You use it daily. Hmm? Yeah. You use it daily. You use it like every three hours, four hours, whenever you check your email. And so you go to Google or Yahoo or Hotmail. So when you go to hotmail.com, so it's HTTP only. Then when you put your username and password, after that you can re, you know, see it or notice it that it will turn from HTTP to HTTPS when you enter your email. So that is where your the secure area or encrypted area or authenticated area starts so HTTPS is for outside access if you offer your internal website with HTTP uh, this is like saying hey welcome all hackers our network is open for you so please come in and get all the data and okay and take down our network as well while you're leaving thank you very much so no, we should always put HTTPS access when we are going for outside access. Um, okay, so the beauty of uh, such a setup is that if you want to make a change on this website, then you may have to do it once and the change will reflect for all the extended slash clone sites of this website. So once we create another website that uh, or the copy of the same website. So suppose this is the website uh, we have which is exams. So uh, we will now create a copy of this website but um, when we make, so there are two websites now, one for intranet, one for internet. Uh, but we when create, uh, want to ch make any changes to one of the sites, the changes will happen to both sites. So if you have five copies of the same site also working for different types of accesses, one, one type of users are coming from internet, one type of users are coming from uh, uh, you know, uh, Wi-Fi uh, guest network, uh, and uh, one type of users are coming from extranet. Anyone knows what's extranet? Yeah, so intranet is inside within the company. Within the company. Would be, um, Another, users. yeah, Definitely. exactly. So the other company users, they have their own intranet, which is extranet to us. Yeah. Our intranet to other companies' users is extranet. So, um, so users coming from extranet as well. If you want to create a copy. You have to create a separate copy of the same site for different types of user accesses. Uh, that's the point. So um, let's go ahead and try to configure it. Internet site for exams. So okay, uh, in central administration we go for application management and then configure alternate access mappings so I'm just gonna go there uh, to the central administration site we already this is our first first page where we can configure the whole uh, SharePoint site so if we go to application management application uh, management and then uh, we go for configure alternate access mappings so again application management and then we go to configure alternate access mappings under the web applications uh, this is where it can offer us the choice of give, offering this website making this internal site available to uh, outside or internet users as well but there is a procedure for that uh, you have to really make it happen. You have to uh, make sure that the, the people from outside really know where to go and uh, access this internal website. 
so uh, there is this is called zone default zone we, which is our zone where we have uh, configured it and then uh, we can also offer uh, edit public profiles uh, through edit public profiles if you if we go there uh, edit product profiles we are seeing now five zones here so there's default intranet internet custom extranet um, we can offer any of the created site collections uh, for outside users so if we can go for SharePoint exams and then change alternate access mapping collection uh, we can just select any of the other sites to make a copy of that or to extend that uh, but since our exam size is already selected uh, so if we go to internet here we can uh, actually suppose we have gone to the hosting site or domain hosting sites uh, anyone knows uh, any famous domain hosting site like uh, you if you want to buy a domain there is uh, GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> so there's a uh, GoDaddy.com where you know you can get a site in whoa, 1.49 per month. Seriously? Oh, that's the hosting. Uh, but okay, it's ten dollar per year, and uh, you can just buy a site there. So, uh, from here. Uh, we can purchase, uh, you know, just like for George Brown uh, dot exams, we had created internal site. We can go to this uh, or any other, uh, you know, there is uh, there are many, many, many other uh, websites uh, which are selling domains and hosting packages, uh, domain website plus email they're offering. Uh, so we can go there and we can uh, buy from there. Suppose we have bought. Uh, you know uh, itprofcourses.com or uh, some other site and so we purchase that we uh, pay that uh, you know uh, ten dollars per year and make our own website on the internet that is available that is accessible to internet users uh, but if we want to so I have a website there in site uh, GoDaddy as well and I actually just went in Yikes! Seriously. Okay. So and then there is that manage DNS here. This area of the website that you really have to uh, configure. And here you have to tell. You have to uh, put. So I courses dot com just created there. Uh, I can. I, I need to really tell where is that. Uh, Intra, uh, internal site so what is the public IP of George Brown College if this is the internal site of George Brown so if we if I uh, let's try to create that map here uh, so this is our SharePoint server servers and uh, this would be the internal DSL router for our so DSL router oops so there's that uh, oh, seriously so DSL router and this is our SharePoint server um, so once we understand this we would know oh what are we doing so uh, this is the internal network and then uh, there is that on the internet we go to uh, host our domain which we purchase in ten dollars on suppose godaddy.com and then uh, the website on godaddy.com is what well, suppose you put the name there as uh, exams uh, exams dot gb dot com suppose that's the website you purchase there 
because uh, our intranet name is intranet uh, site is about exams dot George Brown so uh, this is the internal website and people from outside if they want to access that there are some procedures so um, this is uh, that outside user uh, home user uh, act trying to access your site so what you have to do to configure to let the this home user access this internal website so first you have to have here on the internet uh, you know uh, purchase a uh, domain name and uh, you know now it's just ten dollars anyone can have it for per year you just have to pay ten dollars and uh, then you have to add the public IP to uh, public IP of your company router DSL router and C name as well and uh, so then you have to this is on the website you have to do uh, so the user when oh, in its uh, in the browser when the user types this website exams dot gb dot com which you purchased the user at home types that uh, so the user is taken to this website this website uh, forwards this user to this DSL router because this website has the public IP of this DSL router uh, DSL routers in DSL router you have to log in if you're doing it from home or small company or from your uh, college uh, network or firewall uh, you have to do port forwarding so port forwarding many people uh, also use for gaming as well uh, but uh, port forwarding uh, is all about uh, giving uh, your private uh, computer or server giving your internal server in our a company in the case of company internal server access uh, or you know internal server or mapping your internal server it would be the correct word mapping your internal server IP uh, to port uh, of to the port 80 slash 443 and when, once you configure port forwarding uh, for your uh, you know internal IP so the tra now what happens is that uh, the IP of this server this is the internal server IP and this IP is given here and uh, mapped to a port and through this the traffic is going outside and uh, from outside is going to the home to to the home user so the home user initiates uh, this connection in the browser the home user types this uh, exams.gb.com and then from there uh, the traffic is uh, forwarded in the DNS we have made changes so it forwards this traffic to this public to, to the public IP uh, there is that uh, public IP uh, configured in the router so configured in DSL router or the company firewall router uh, so uh, this is all so from here it is uh, then forwarded to SharePoint server and the SharePoint website opens uh, with proper internet site authentication it opens that site for this user here right so uh, I'll show if I if we go back to uh, our server here uh, so uh, I'm back on my server so if suppose uh, here we have this website called HTTP colon so I'm just typing that in 
the server http colon slash slash exams dot uh, gb dot com so we have to mention this url here internet and uh, hmm, no, it's not clear so So it's exams.gb.com uh, I have mentioned here in internet uh, portion. So uh, what we are trying to do here is that uh, we're trying to uh, provide a URL which we purchased outside uh, to and it, it should be HTTPS actually because uh, the traffic is coming from outside. Inside we have HTTP but here it should be HTTPS so we have to do the port binding or we have to buy a certificate uh from the godaddy site as well where, and that site also provides a certificate uh which we can purchase and download and uh, put in our ias and bind this site to the you know that certificate with port 443 so this is uh we have just uh, mentioned here but what is happening in the background if we I have uh, screenshots of uh, you know areas that we need to configure so uh, yes we we went for edit public URLs I'm just going through the site and these are the areas which we saw then we tried to understand uh, what is uh, what is that we need to do through this diagram or this drawing so if we go ahead and put so I put a URL there whichever you purchased uh, how we can offer internet users access to our internal website so um, these are the areas uh, I already showed there on GoDaddy that this is a DNS zone where you have to mention at and IP public IP of your DSL router here and at sign here and then the CNAME record here as well uh, which is not created right now but uh, uh, this is where you should do that and if you are really interested in doing want to do that at home you purchase a website and you want to uh, really uh, go and configure this let me know we we can configure I'll uh, let you know what exact steps you need to take here uh, to offer any of your uh, you know website that's published on your SharePoint uh, that you want to offer to the internet users uh, so this is one area then there is that uh, other area in your DSL router this is port forwarding screen that we can see but it is different for every company so I have int uh, connection internet connection from Rogers so uh, you have internet connection from which company at home Rogers as well okay uh, we have lots of uh, you know uh, companies that are selling uh, these internet connections and we are connected to those uh, Bell or you know any other companies so uh, you, they, all, they all they give different uh, routers hey there's another one we are lucky today man this this line is complete uh, uh, the only thing is that yeah I need rest but it's okay so Oops, resuming now. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, so this was the port forwarding that we can do from home and there are two machine names uh, mentioned here and uh, there is that private IP that is mentioned here with the ports, uh, respective ports uh, here. So this is how the port forwarding is done that according to this diagram uh, the user accesses uh, the website from home the web uh, through website forwards that request to this DSL router and the port forwarding is mentioned here uh, and the public IP ha of the DSL router has to be so you have to log into your uh, Rogers uh, if, uh, you know router or Bell router DSL router at home uh, normally people don't know the admin password but uh, you can just call the company and they would give you uh, and you can just uh, know then what is the public IP that you have been assigned but this public IP normally is not static if you want to make it static like it never changes 
you have they will give you ten uh, they will charge you ten dollar more uh, and then you, they will make your uh, public IP static at home uh, you can also you know offer your exchange servers uh, service if you have installed exchange server at home and uh, you want uh, it, to receive emails from outside this is the way to do it as well but uh, in that case you just have to have the in internal IP of the exchange server and the port 25 uh, mapped to it that's all and with TCP, I, uh, TCP and UDP uh, incoming outgoing, yeah. Is it ten dollars a month or is it just ten dollars a month? Per no, month? per month, yeah. For otherwise, your public IP will keep changing, and you have to change that IP here as well. Although there are third-party services, I think DNS Zone or DNS Services something uh, that will, if you install it on your server, it will automatically change your website. Uh, you know uh, IP address and you don't have to actually you know buy the ten dollar service as well but uh, you know if anyone is interested uh, we, you can just ask me and we will just try to do that hey there's another one cool so we are just counting today how many students oh okay it's recording as well so uh, this is uh, the way to configure. Although I wanted to configure that, but we cannot because of the uh, you know uh, restrictions in the college. But uh, if anyone wants to do it at home, let me know, and uh, I can help you with that. Uh, then there are lists and libraries. So w first we discussed about uh, alternate access mappings. Uh, and that uh, we can offer the same internal website to external users as well as extranet users as well uh, for internet user and ex extranet users this is the same way you have to if your port forwarding is configured and uh, uh, your dns zones are configured uh, then you have you should have no problem there uh, so if i am on ca.godaddy.com and hey wasn't i logged in okay logged me and kicked out kicked me out again okay i'm inside here and uh then selecting whatever domains you purchased and then the managed dns and this is the area uh where you, if you are offering it for extranet as well as intranet dns zone file just go there and you have to add the at record host a record uh with your information of your public ip as well as the other information uh, the extra net and CNAME information two, uh, two or three CNAME records you can create there so uh, this is the area for that in fact since I have uh, I am showing that in the video so I'll just take a screenshot here and put it way down I'm doing it live all so uh, but yeah just trying to show that uh, copy image put it instead of this I can just show when I'm I'm also referring it again and again I'll just show you there so uh, what's going on here is now uh, we need to go inside and see what are the daily tasks we do in order to create and maintain a site collection or if we want to create sub sites and we want to see what can we add to that website for collaboration and uh, so for this we're just going to uh, open our uh, main website but uh, so there are uh, we are going to focus a bit more on the work that an administrator needs to be familiar with in terms of lists and libraries so creating lists and libraries how do we do that then defining and enabling features establishing list thresholds uh, working with content types and columns so these are some of the uh, tasks that day-to-day uh, -day admins do uh, especially site admins if not the SharePoint server administrators but we should uh, still know how it works and then there is that the purpose of lists and libraries uh, lists hold items and libraries hold documents so we're gonna see a list of long list of items that uh, we can add to our site 
and then in the libraries uh, we can see what kind of document services uh, that it offers then they are easy to create whatever you do avoid spaces in the URLs the main message here is just avoid spaces in the URLs we're going to be creating some URLs there we're going to be creating some sub sites uh, child sites uh, to the parent sites uh, you can configure checkout versioning approval and additional columns so these are some of the uh, features that we're going to uh, go navigation is always choppy without assistance so we're gonna see that it's not that easy uh, we have to really be very uh, used to it to get our way around the uh, multiple sites and to access their features and services uh, and then there is that access to lists and libraries through Internet Explorer can make favorites in IE for faster access uh, administrators can deploy favorites through group policy so all the lists and libraries and child sites you've created uh, you can uh, through group policy you can put inside the Internet Explorer favorites of all the users uh, through Windows Explorer using network locations as well we can uh, have create shortcuts and publish it to the users desktops so what are access to lists and libraries okay so there are we have one site called exams dot shpd domain dot local so there are lists and libraries uh, that we can uh, work with play with and we can this is a site collection called exams dot shpt I mean but we're going to create we can create sub sites of the these as well as uh, you know let's check out lists here on the left side so uh, everyone has opened the site okay so everyone has any of the site open oh and you're also Nathan you're uh, opening that yeah, it worked, it worked here. <laughs> so screenshots <laughs> okay <laughs> um, so uh, this is lists that I'm going to and lists has uh, these uh, uh, you know uh, features announcements calendar links tasks oh. uh, so uh, we can either add it add them use this to list track upcoming events and calendar then links to any other sites uh, that we can you know add use the links list for links to web pages that your team members will find and tasks use the task list to keep track but if we go to create here uh, so we can see that there are there is the these uh, you know uh, uh, more features communications tracking libraries lots of more options to configure your uh, website so uh, guys uh, if you want to see this uh, in better format we have to install silver light so if we go back to this so uh, we right now we need to have install Microsoft silver light just to see the latest uh, you know format of showing all these services so if I go to the to another server here uh, and open my open this exams website again so and if I go to lists here and go to create it shows like this and if I go back to the same site on the second server not the same site but same area uh, it shows all the options like this for the list but if I go back it shows like this so the difference it's the same area but the you know graphics are different and it's easy to understand easy to navigate 
uh, everything why how is it appearing here you have to install silver light so do you have internet in your any of the machine yeah. or domain controller or server 2 yeah. Yeah. so if we go so I will just go back here so if you open the site and you're on lists when you go to lists and go to create it asks this option here or this message comes here install Microsoft silver lights silver light uh, and it's gonna download from internet um, uh, so it will look like this old way but if you install silver light then it will look like this after silver light is installed and I have to work on this one this version so that's why I was saying that uh, install silver light this means you must have I'm uh, I'm looking at this site or I've opened this site in a dom on domain controller browser and on server 2 so on server 2 I don't have uh, silver light installed and so it looks like this and on server 1 I have silver light installed so it looks like this and I, I need to work on this one so uh, I'll show you how to, well you just have to follow this link if you have internet connection here so let's make sure if we have internet connection so I'm just gonna go to server 2 settings well this is uh, VMware workstation so VMnet 8 is there configured and I'll make sure that the internet yeah it's not it's disabled right now so I'm gonna enable that internet Nick once it is enabled and I get this website access here or internet access here it's trying to identify yep I got internet access now because the yellow icon is gone from there so now I will install this uh, install myself server light or click this option and there you go it installs that and so I'll save it down so in downloads and then it's just 12 megabyte yep yeah yeah I've done it on domain controller and server too so once we have done this hello hey all this left side lane is here but what's wrong with the right side okay. <laughs> like as if hey everyone on the right side don't come tomorrow maybe they called each other in Oh, you have to wake him up. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> up. Hi. It's okay. I'm recording that. Don't worry. Oh. Okay. So, uh, it is downloaded, Silver Light. So, I'm just going to click Run and uncheck Bing as my search engine. <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay. And make MSN my home page. Yeah, right. So, install now so it says mucho mucho importante uh, if you know Spanish because it's wrong already <laughs> I know uh, it's uh, so enable Microsoft update yes it's okay next so I just installed a very small uh, program called silver light by Microsoft and it's going to totally change the interface of this page which we are creating right now so I'll just click next here because we need to work on the newer format and it's more understandable and easy to navigate easier to navigate than this one so after a cellulite will be installed it will look like this uh, instead of those just uh, URLs it's gonna have some graphics but the navigation is much easier so I'm just gonna go back and make sure if I F5 does it just change or do I have to close the browser and open it Yeah, I have to close the browser. So, uh, 
just gonna open or stop everything close it close services minimize this and open the browser again and it should be showing me the new interface now so you've downloaded survey yeah the yellow bar yeah so did you click that in the list so I'm gonna go there and show you uh, I have to log in first did you see that in the list send and create yeah. and you have uh, internet connection to your inside your machine okay for on server three or two yeah three uh, let's not work on that because it's a known issue so server two and domain controller it's gonna work fine okay good so it's showing me the same icons on the second server as well which is good so um, yeah uh, we have this uh, silver light version of uh, you know showing the list so if we go to the list uh, there are many items in the list uh, we can add context calendar announcements discussion board but if we go for custom list here uh, since this is an exams site uh, so we can just uh, you know go for uh, you know social sciences well I couldn't think of anything longer than this so social sciences um, other stuff new items statuses other short bits of information so uh, for URL I would not want to leave any space here uh, so I clicked here list let me just uh, put it on so list here and then just went straight for a custom uh, you know link here which will be appearing as a URL uh, so I'm creating a list inside my site collection right now so it's uh, social sciences but uh, if I click more options here so type a new name as you want it to appear in headings and links throughout the site type descriptive text that will help site visitors use this list so that's how um, it will and uh, show there social sciences we can just put any kind of description there um, so specify whether a link to this list appears in the quick launch and yes it should be appearing in the quick, quick launch when you open the site collection first time this link should also appear from now on and uh, once so uh, what I just did was copy paste the same thing in description description and click create here went down and clicked create so now my site uh, collection the exams.shpd domain dot local it has on the left side social sciences as uh, a list item and in the social sciences, uh, sciences we have inside this configuration that we can play with uh, and so once we have this list item here social sciences uh, under the list or since it is talking about cell exams so I can keep go going back and create uh, you know three or four uh, links here so if I click social sciences just now so up there you can see that since I put the space there so now the URL shows like this social person 20 sciences when I was creating that URL I should not have given a space and uh, that's why uh, and otherwise we can if we don't give the space and later we can still separate it here but in the URL as the slide in the PowerPoint slide as well it said that whatever you do do not give spaces in the URL so it otherwise it will look like this right uh, so I'll go back to the list again 
lists and then click create again so uh, I'll uh, this time I'll choose asset library asset library so it's uh, uh, images uh, images videos images and videos so the first letter is capital so this the the URL would look like this and there should be no percentage uh, sign showing there then I will just go for more options if we have anything extra that we can configure uh, so again uh, in a production environment I would give a long detail for that but here it's navigation and item version history uh, we can create versioning here so if you're improving something uh, in the documentation you could or any item you've uploaded a video there then you have a latest video of that so there could be a version maintained by SharePoint that okay that was 1.0 video then you have released 2.0 then it's going to maintain the versioning of items you upload there uh, so we can uh, uh, either see yes here or we're gonna go somewhere else and see the item versioning again and some other features for that so for now I'm just gonna keep it no and go create click create for that so items and videos is showing under the libraries and social sciences is showing under the lists uh, but if we keep the images and videos um, images and videos clicked and check the URL up there now so under the exams there is that other uh, URL showing but it is showing properly as images and videos there is no space given there and it is showing here as well images and videos but uh, uh, let's check it out if we can try to change that so if I go and check the you know there is a library tools showing here so I've clicked this images and videos after clicking that uh, this option comes here uh, libraries and document if I click library many options come here right so if many options are coming and I go way to the right side there is library settings so when I click library settings uh, there are loads of options there so first of all let me check the under the general settings title description and navigation if I go there now I can properly put spaces there which is just going to change on the left side of that uh, you know here uh, under the home under the libraries it's going to give spaces and look better here but it's not going to make spaces here under the URL so that's what I wanted uh, display this document library on the quick launch so on the quick launch here the quick launch area it's going to show properly now with spaces right so if I click yes here see now it is properly showing and uh, social sciences I already gave space there so it really I ruined ruined it I mean the URL is not proper so uh, for images and videos we are inside the images and videos and we have lots of uh, uh, you know uh, options here general settings has versioning settings advanced settings validation column defaults rating you can even put the rating there so whatever documents and images are uploaded there uh, users can actually rate that uh, if it uh, the uh, quality wise so audience targeting settings metadata uh, per location view view settings and form settings so then there is that permissions and management communications we have lots of options just to maintain one uh, library item uh, that we have added here this is for each library item and then there is content types here that is showing if I keep going down so content types it says that images can be uploaded audios can be uploaded video can be uploaded 
or add from existing site content types we can add more contents as well maybe you want some other type of content like PowerPoint site should be uploaded here as well or uh, any other content type right uh, so we can add here as well and we can add columns here as well that what uh, extra columns you need author comments copyright date picture taken frame height frame width keywords so if I want to go back to my parent site and I click home here so if I click home here am I on the parent site like the main site collection or I am still inside the images and videos hmm? exactly so when I go home go click home here on the quick launch bar I am at the main site so if I go back to social sciences here uh, which is under the list uh, and now the URL is also messed up here uh, so there are if I just click here list it gives me lots of other options here right so I can also have a data sheet view there's a standard view that we can see here it's an empty space but we can have a data sheet view as well but if I click here the list cannot be displayed in data sheet view for one or more of the following reasons the data sheet component compatible with Microsoft SharePoint foundation is not installed your web browser does not support ActiveX controls or a component is not properly configured okay mm, I'm getting this error so I'm just gonna go to the libraries here images and videos and go to library here and there's a standard view and data sheet view for every item we add to the quick launch bar I'm gonna check for this one okay it's again saying the same thing that I have ActiveX web browser does not support hmm I have a pretty old web browser or something so if I try to add this to from tools and internet options to the security trusted sites maybe then it will let me do that so F5 for refresh this site am I on images and videos okay and video then I click library again data sheet view okay still is hmm strange so this I'm on server 2 if I go back to server 1 where also I have opened another site I have created this is exams.sshpd and on server 1 I have GB intranet 1 this also has a list available I just wanted to check quickly the data sheet view if it comes there or not so I'm just gonna quickly create a list here go to discussion board suppose in the list I'm adding the discussion board and discussion board since it's exams so exam results discussion but am I doing any mistake here anyone knows what mistake am I doing here when I am putting a name here for a list I should not have spaces and more options uh, navigation exam results discussion well nothing more here so create when I create that so there is another item under the discussions exam results discussion so I will first make it better by adding spaces here but the URL does not have any space exam results right it should not have in the URL but here we can have right to make it look better so I'm gonna go to the list which is already there go to the list settings and then go for title description and navigator so spaces just for it to look better in the quick launch bar so save there you go now it looks better um, so but I what I wanted to check was if I click back here again which I just created in another site um, that 
uh, if I click list here, the data sheet view, so I view and manage uh, list items using a spreadsheet format. You can bulk edit item properties while using this. This control is currently disabled. You might not have the right permission level to use this. You might need to select an object or item or the control might not work in seriously. I'm an administrator. How can you say I don't have access? This is not acceptable. Okay, anyway. So, um, I'm just going to log out from... This is a system account. This is the king. Okay. Um, so, we need to figure out that. Anyway, so let's try to uh, get... Uh, and try to see more features there, uh, more options for lists. So if I go to, I already am, if I click list here, and well, I have created uh, exam dis results discussion here. So, uh, or wh whichever site you have created, go to list and list settings. I'm just going to list settings here, and we have lots of other stuff that we uh, can check. So versioning settings, if I go there, this is for every uh, list items or library we create. So require content approval for submitted items. So some users upload videos and maybe it's a good idea to put approval there, but if you have thousands of users, then it's a bad idea to put approval for each and every video. You cannot just do that. Or you can delegate this to the site admin uh, who would go through these tasks. Uh, and also create a version each time you added an item in this list. Yes, this is versioning. So if I click the yes, keep the following number of versions. Optionally limit the number of versions to retain. Uh, we can just put how many num versions, number of versions it wants to retain there. And uh, keep drafts for the following number of approved versions. So whichever are the older versions of that video or document you've uploaded, uh, save it somewhere. Uh, so that will be the case. So uh, I haven't checked this one. Optionally limit the number. Of, I just pressed yes for item version history. So specify whether a version is created each time you edit an item. Uh, so and then there is a draft item security. Who should see draft items or the older items? So we can give permission here according to uh, you know whoever should be having the permission for those documents. So I'll press OK here. This is just a versioning. Then I go for advanced settings here. And then there is that content types, which uh, we wanted to see as well. Allow management of content types, yes. Item level permissions. Uh, you can give permissions, read all items, read items that were created by the user. Uh, specify which items users are allowed to read. So you can just. Uh, you know prevent or allow users to read the items attachments to list items are enabled allow items from this discussion board to appear in search results yes so there are many advanced options here that we can play with uh, but we should know it they are there and validation settings here if we go to validation settings so formula specify the formula you want to use to validate the data in this wall column uh, when new items are saved to this list to pass validation the formula must evaluate to true for more information see formula so we have to go for and check formulas to put whatever content is there we should uh, if those formulas will validate that content and then let them up let them be uploaded so we have to go through the formulas for that this requires some homework from our side but at least we know that for content validation, we need to go through the formulas and check what formulas are there to validate the newly updated content, right? The user message can be also given here that, hey, we are trying to validate your content, so stay put. Okay, canceling out from here. Rating settings are also there. You can allow the users to rate any video or audio or anything that they upload and if I press yes here we can click OK so uh, whatever video audio we upload there will be you know five stars put there and you can just go for one star or five stars when you upload an item 
audience targeting settings this is for you know what type of audiences are coming so enabling audience targeting will create a targeting column for this list web parts such as the content query web part can use this data to filter lists contents based on so which users have used which video which users have uh, are coming from uh, what background what type of access connection and uh, what uh, type of services they are using so that is in a in an audience uh, in a targeting that uh, what type of audience mostly we have and what type of material uh, they are mostly accessing what uh, type of material they don't need they are just ignoring that so we could remove that uh, for optimization from our site metadata navigation settings per location view settings and form settings are so there are many other items then there is that content types showing here uh, so right now this is a discussion board it could be a video audio site as well uh, content types uh, feature is enabled which means that add from existing site content types uh, already discussion content discussion any kind of discussion can take place and messages can be sent but you can add some more type of content that can be added to uh, this uh, URL or this page if I go to add from existing site contents click here now uh, we already know that discussions are going on in this page on this page and because it's a discussion board so discussions and messages are the type of content that we can upload but then you can also have comments or add it to that content we can add a comment we can have uh, announcement on the board as well added here as a content type or we can go ahead and keep going down and try to it's a discussion board so we already know that what type of content we can add there right and press ok so content types once added so uh, this is add new discussion when we click add new discussion so in fact when we go for uh, the main area so now there are comments here and uh, posts links here as well uh, so and if we go and select a new add new some exam results discussion so if we go inside add new discussion uh, so the type of content that we added should be showing here as well so subject uh, how was the exam we can just add something like that um, allow access I just put in uh, put something there save and the discussion shows here uh, rating is here because we enable the rating here and uh, then uh, account created by who this and how was the exam when we click here so there's that and view properties for this discussion so there are permissions edit item and the ratings is still showing there so close so um, then there are site actions here uh, that we can navigate through to our top site right now I am under so uh, okay uh, I am in exam results discussion right so now I'm going back to my server 2 where I was checking the data sheet um, so we have added lists we have a click list and we have click create and then we saw that there are you can create list when you click list here you can add context calendar announcement uh, you have to make sure that URLs should be uh, without space put there and whatever you add here is uh, supposed to be so I can add survey links project tasks we can go just like in a typical site then there is a library here library has uh, you know anything and everything to do with documentation uh, multimedia documentation uh, so forms library asset library data connection document library 
uh, report library so and wiki page library so document library if I select that in the library uh, all exam documents so I'll create that and then uh, all exam documents is also there now with the proper URL uh, library settings if I go there and you know just like in any uh, title I have put spaces I'm just gonna put space here as well I can just check with all the versioning information and uh, configure all the other stuff here uh, columns so if I have columns now before we were trying to see what is in the content uh, type and content type is actually not showing here so advanced settings if I go there content type is selected to no so I'm just gonna press yes here so at least you know I can add other types of contents here as well press ok and also if I go to columns I'm just making it perfectly for the video I'm not trying to follow up a little you know going a little fast because one stop video content I could cover a lot here for the last day so add from existing site content types click here so um, well I can just select audio here image form so content types I've selected here what I wanted to check further is can I select columns as well so there are columns showing here already and create column already we have huge amount of columns here but if we create column for document library we can add this like this column name so we can put here some custom name here column uh, uh, for example this is for document library so uh, put yeah so your docs your documents you can just put the column and then select what should it have number should it have some currency data time yes or no personal group hyperlink or single line of text only so we can just describe it as well any details for the columns for the site how many characters it should have uh, required that this column contains information or no information at all it's up to you press ok so um, this is all exam documents I created and uh, this is the column your documents showing here which I just created now so we can add any custom columns here and then click add document just to upload any documents here browse if I go browse do I have any document if I don't well, let's just create sample double click press ok so the file name is uh, invalid or the file is empty a file name cannot contain any of the following <laughs> So the file has to be filled uh, before I can upload that. That's nice. Um, blah blah blah. So I have put some very professional content here. Yes. Okay. Double click. Okay. So now it's saying what is the content type? Is the document audio image form? I had added added these content types here, so we can put all this types of content as well as document right if I had not added in the content types this would not have shown here so name is sample.txt title as you can see I put the title here blah 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 your documents save so this is the sample and your documents I could have so I did add that column custom column here I could have put some information there when I was adding this document here so we can control how we upload and who can access this through libraries and lists so if I go back to lists here uh, and go to so, 
sorry, list. No, not list, but any of the sites here, uh, like uh, libraries, like uh, images and videos, or all exams. Library settings. So uh, I'm just trying to see uh, what is left here. If I see, if I try to see the hierarchy here, there's settings, all exam documents, then there's main. So if I click main, I'm back to the main site here. Um, if I go to my central administration site now, or there is that all site content here as well that uh, you can see on this site and on social sciences, which is the sub uh, URL or sub site of that. All the tools available there. Data sheet view, we still have to, I still have to add those. I'll configure those stuff here. So okay. Let's minimize that and pause the video. Resuming. So there's that uh, other topic as well, list throttling. Lists or list libraries can contain millions of items. The more items you have, power, the greater the performance hit and chance of problems. List throttling, a new feature, helps to set limits on how many rows of data can be retrieved for a list or library at any one time. You can establish li limits on data that is applied. So when data is presented for viewing, for indexing, for deleting and more. So let's check out this option as well, list throttling. And there's that uh, screenshot for this, that we go for central administration, uh, web applications, general settings, and resource throttling. So this is the option there. So central administration, site there and then manage uh, web applications and then there's that general setting so for GB intranet for exam sites if there's a huge amount of traffic and we really want people to like or SharePoint to say whoa 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 stop it man don't put pressure on my website so you can go for okay maybe there's a huge rush on exam sites you can go for general settings general settings and then resource throttling and there's that list view threshold is 5000 specify the maximum number of items that our database operation can involve at one time operations that exceed this limit are prohibited so there's that a huge amount of options there, lots of options here. List view threshold for auditors and administrators 20,000. Uh, they can view that much because of the management and configuration tasks they have to go through. So, lookup threshold is age, specify the maximum lookup, number of lookup, person, group, or workflow status fields, daily time window for large queries. So, start time 10 o'clock. You can just put uh, duration here, how much queries can be searched, done uh, in one day starting from 10. And also list unique permissions threshold is also 50,000, specify the maximum number of unique permissions. So throttling is all about keeping the performance up and tuned for SharePoint. Canceling out from here.